The following is a production of Learfield Sports. It's football season in Chattanooga, where the mocks are back-to-back -back SoCon champions. We've got tremendous football players in this room. Caught at the 25, down to the 20, down to the 10, touchdown Chattanooga. Well, I think the fan support part of it is huge, because our fans are phenomenal. Wants to throw, and it is Hicks. Led by head coach Russ Huseman. Come out and play with unbelievable energy today. Play with the chip on your shoulder today. You guys belong. Let's roll. Welcome to Inside Chattanooga Football, hosted by head coach Russ Huseman and the voice of the Chattanooga Mox, Jim Reynolds. Brought to you by Allegra, 24-hour relief from indoor and outdoor allergies. By Coca-Cola, Chattanooga Coca-Cola Bottling Company, the world's largest Coca-Cola bottler. By FSG Bank, proud to be the official bank of Chattanooga Mox Athletics. Welcome to Inside Chattanooga Football. I'm Jim Reynolds, and on the program today should be a good show because we have lots of highlights of the Mox win over Sanford last weekend. UTC went to Birmingham and claimed their first conference win of the season, a 10-point victory over the Bulldogs. Also on the program today, a behind-the-scenes look at student support services. Those are the folks that help all the Mox athletes with their grades and classes and make sure they perform as well as possible in the classroom. We're also going to highlight Lauren Greenspoon, volleyball players. The volleyball team went to Virginia Tech this weekend and had a really, really good tournament in the Hokie Invitational. All that and more coming your way in just a moment when Inside Chattanooga Football returns right after this. This segment of Inside Chattanooga Football is brought to you by Allegra, 24-hour relief from indoor and outdoor allergies. Sanford's a good rivalry for us because of closeness. They're in the league. Um, but, you know, I got a ton of respect for what they've done there. Pat Sullivan built that program. He did a heck of a job, and, and it looks like Hatch is, is taking it and running with it pretty good. Uh, so. I mean, Sanford's got a lot going for them, a great university. So, uh, you know, I got a lot of respect, and, and I know we know how good they are, and, and we we know we got to get some things fixed, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, we got to play a whole lot better than what we're playing right now. Giving up way too many big plays. I can't say it's inexperienced because some, you know, some of the older guys are missing tackles. Some of the older guys are, are not in the right gaps. Um, you know, some of the better players are, are giving up, you know, some throws. Um, so we'll, we'll work. We'll work hard this week. But there'll be some guys that we need to have compete and play. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're gonna go into today's practice and and. Uh, we're going to see who produces, who practices uh, in certain positions. Some guys, you know, Keontae Davis is playing good, and Freeman's playing good, and Keevan Leslie's playing good for the most part. And, uh, Lucas Webb was not a great factor, but he's he's fine. You know, there's been, and then there's other positions that, that we need guys to step up and play better. And, uh, you know, hopefully we see that this week. I think... Uh, we're getting ready to play a real good team. I think you know it, our players know it. They have a lot of great athletes. They're making plays, they're making big plays. <clears throat> Again, they're playing good defense. Uh, they've been playing good defense for a long time there at Sanford. They've been one of the best in the league for quite a while, at least since I've been here. Uh, so I mean, we got our work cut out for us. We're going to have to play really well. They've been good the last three years for sure, where you know you, where you know if you don't play well, you're not going to win the game. So is this the best one? 
you know, I'm not sure. They were pretty good last year, the year before when they beat us, and they won, you know, they shared the conference title. They were good that year. So it's just, it's a typical Sanford team. Just tough, you know, they're pretty physical. They got guys that know how to make plays, and, and uh, they'll make plays. If they get opportunities to make plays, they'll make them. Oh, they've hit some big shots in the passing game. I mean, just deep shots, posts, uh, outside verticals, catch and run. They've caught screens and run big plays. Uh, handed the ball off to the backs, big plays. They've had, they probably had big plays all the way across the board in every aspect of it. Throwing it short, throwing it deep. Backs popping big runs. They, 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 they're, they're well coached. I mean, they got a great scheme. And uh, they're making plays. From day one, I ranked them in the top 25. Uh, so, but that's just me. I'm sure, I think Bruce Fowler gets a vote. He probably voted them too. You know, the, the, offensively, they're pretty similar to last year. I, I would say, Probably the influence that he has on him is he's a throw guy. He likes to throw it. And you can see they've thrown the ball a lot more, uh, I, I would guess, this year than they have. But uh, pretty similar. Uh, their offensive coordinator is back. And, 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 you know, they're going to want to pound you too now. And, and that's what makes it difficult. If we just said, let's just defend the pass, that's one thing. But you got to have the ability to stop their running game, and it's a good running game. They got good backs, and so it's uh, it'll be a test for our guys. The Learfield Sports Directors Cup honors the nation's best overall collegiate athletic program in each division, men's and women's sports. The prestigious award continues its reign as the crowning achievement in college athletics. To follow your favorite team, like us on Facebook. Find us in USA Today, online, and on Twitter at LS Directors Cup. Over two decades of excellence, the Learfield Sports Directors Cup. This segment of Inside Chattanooga Football is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Chattanooga Coca-Cola Bottling Company, the world's largest Coca-Cola bottler. I'm Emily Blattman. I'm the Associate Athletics Director for Student Sports Services. So we pretty much encompass everything that a student athlete does from the time that they are signed and decide to come to Chattanooga to the time that they graduate. We help them with their schedules, we help them with their career planning, we'll help them with making sure that all their courses go towards their degree, and of course also eligibility, that they stay eligible to compete for the NCAA. So it's a little bit tricky. We have to look at everything from what days that sport competes to what time of day that sport practices. So a sport such as golf, um, this time of year with the sunlight staying out later, they have a little bit more flexibility, um, but basically they can't be in class after about one o'clock in the afternoon. We do not have a mandatory study hall. The way that we work it is um, team specific and each coach sort of picks their GPA threshold. So anyone below a certain GPA may have three hours a week. Someone with a lower GPA, five to seven hours a week. Um, so we really do everything very individualized and to that specific student athlete rather than sort of treating everyone the same. If they're on the road, our first thing we do is we notify the professor. We give them a letter stating that the student athlete is competing uh, you know, on behalf of the institution. Once the professor knows that, the professor gets to choose if they want the student athlete to turn the work in early, while they're on the road, or when they get back. We prefer, and most of our students prefer, to turn their work in before they leave, because then when they're gone, they don't have to worry about that specific course. I love seeing them graduate. I love seeing that student that didn't necessarily know that they were going to come 
to Chattanooga and get a degree. I love that moment when they realize they're really graduating, they fill out that graduation application and they get to call their families and say, hey, I'm graduating, come to, you know, come watch me walk. Um, that's probably my proudest moment for our student athletes. It's time for the Student Athlete Spotlight, brought to you by Southeast Bank. Different passers, you know, uh, obviously pass the ball. Different attackers are, are attacking the third contact. The person that is common, the person that is in every single play is Lauren Greenspoon, is our setter. Uh, she's got every second contact. So, uh, you know, she's really, uh, you know, for lack of better, you know, we're quarterbacking our offense and she is doing a great job of just putting our hitters in positions uh, for them to be successful. It was awesome. Um, the atmosphere is awesome. We brought a lot of energy and we focused on our side and it was totally a team effort. It was one together, one is our motto. So we were one, no matter if we were losing, winning, whatever the score was, it was one and lots of energy. Um, I think so. I think we're really embracing the one motto and we're transferring what we're doing in practice to the game and I think we're just comfortable with each other getting it like used to our system and no matter what the ball is we're just making everything better. Samford is always a good one. Um, big rival but I think uh, UNCG and Furman are going to be some big games and starting with UNCG on Friday, I think that will be a good one, so hopefully we're looking for a win. We celebrate you loyal UTC fans who brave sunburn and parking game after game, you super fans who live, eat and breathe your UTC sports, and you family of fanatics passing down your game day traditions. No matter who you are Mighty Mox, FSG has you covered. Get the exclusive Power C debit card and show your UTC pride. Together we'll ride the rails to victory. FSG Bank is proud to be the official bank of UTC Athletics. This segment of Inside Chattanooga Football is brought to you by FSG Bank. Proud to be the official bank of Chattanooga Mox Athletics. I mean, they're just going to chuck it all over the field. Jacob Huseman, veteran quarterback, with the pocket breaking down, sprints forward for a first down, about 30 yards. He's out of bounds, just shy of down and 14. Eubank is down. Toivy and Brand, the ends. By the freshman of night. Third down and 21. Again, the defensive line gets the pressure, and again, Eubank goes down. Back-to-back -back sacks for the front four of Chattanooga. With two on it. And the first play of the game for Derek Crane. He's the decoy, and it's for a shoddy touchdown mox. Play that kept the chain moving on the opening drive. Oh, big time hit. <laughs> A.J. Hampton once again, the captain and the linebacker, put Stanford in a third down and 14 situation. Chattanooga rushes four. Again, collapses the pocket and the ball's free. Stanford falls on it back at the two. Keontae Davis, who rushes. Pulls it away from Derek Crane and has a seam. Touchdown, Houston. 32nd career rushing touchdown for Jacob Houston. Denzel Williams into the backfield on third and long. Play fake for Eubank, and Eubank out of the grasp of one, down by the other, Keontae Davis into the backfield again. Very different feel to this game now than about an hour ago. Donaldson can't get to Houston. A deep ball for Ford, a juggling catch, and a touchdown. Forty-three yards to C.J. Board, and the Mocs have their first lead of the afternoon. 
Wiseman pulls it away from Bagley. He's got C.J. Board on the outside, making moves to pick up the first down before Sim and catches up. Pick up the pace here a little bit as we approach one minute to play in the half. Houston with a deep out to C.J. Board, and he put it on the numbers. Out of bounds at the 21. He'll move the pocket to the left for Houston, but there's nothing over there. Houston has Young underneath. Down to the 11. Very close to it. Houston puts it down for Ribeiro, and he drills it. Nate, that would have been good from well more than 50. Yeah, he got all that one. That was perfect. The half closes with 17 unanswered points for the Mox. Defensively, here they come. And everybody. They did oh. bring pressure, and it left CJ Board wide open. Fifth catch of the day for Board, now a career high, more than 80 yards receiving for Board. Don't let up with the tempo, but Keontae Davis is in to wrap up Michael Eubank, the fifth sack of the day for this mock defense. With press coverage. They'll set up the screen, and there's nowhere to run. The ball's out, but it looked like he was down. And they'll say fumble recovered by the box. Shuffles on underhand to the outside to the backup quarterback. Touchdown, Mox. It's Benefield's first of the year. The two quarterback formation is usually Benefield getting it, handing it. Got to get to the 12. Here comes pressure from Brandy. Knocked it free, and it's picked out of the air. Vantrell McMillan. And the Mox take over outside of their own 30 with a 10-point lead. And Chattanooga will get out of Birmingham with a 10-point win, riding the shoulders of their preseason All-America, their two-time Southern Conference Player of the Year, and the son of his head coach. We celebrate you, loyal UTC fans, who brave sunburn and parking game after game. You super fans who live, eat, and breathe your UTC sports. And you, family of fanatics, passing down your game day traditions. No matter who you are, Mighty Mox, FSG has you covered. Get the exclusive Power C debit card and show your UTC pride. Together, we'll ride the rails to victory. FSG Bank is proud to be the official bank of UTC athletics. Welcome back to Inside Chattanooga Football, joined by head football coach Russ Huseman. First of all, going on the road, road victories are hard to come by. Conference victories are hard to come by. You must feel good about your performance at Samford. feel really good. Uh, conference games on the road are tough, obviously, just like you said. Uh, but to beat a team like Samford on the road, who I believe is, is going to be in the mix at the end of this thing, and ha will have a lot to say about who wins or loses this conference title this year. Uh, very impressed with them. They've got athletes, they've got good players, so I'm awful proud of our team for going down there and getting a win. Do you look at those numbers and say, wow, they're averaging 660 whatever yards of total offense a game and averaging 51 points per game? You held them about half of both those numbers? Well, I, I felt like we were a little better than Florida A&M and Central Arkansas defensively. So um, I didn't think they were going to get 650 on us or 51. But I, I was concerned about, you know, we, we had to keep them in check. And, you know, fortunately, we rushed the passers so well, JR. It almost made them, you know, do different things. I mean, they, they, they've always been a screen team, you know, it, 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 even last year. But, you know, Hatch has is, is, is always been great with, with screens and bubbles and jailbreaks. And, uh, we forced them into that game. We didn't give them any kind of opportunity to, other than the first, you know, first quarter there to take any kind of deep shots on us. And, and I think that, you know, that hurt him a little bit because he had to get the ball out of his hand. So, um, 
you know, thank goodness we rushed the pass and we've got some guys up there that can do that. Yeah, we're talking about first-year coach uh, Coach Hasher who came to the Sanford program. He had been at Georgia Southern. We see him at Valdosta State. So he has that reputation of throwing it all over the yard, doesn't he? Yeah, they've been throwing it quite a bit. I, I was just looking at the numbers this morning and – you know, through three games, we've thrown it 71 times or something like that. And through three games, I think they've thrown it 120-something, 100, maybe even more than that. So uh, they're airing it out quite a bit. And, and uh, But, th you know, that's that's his deal. And uh, th But, you know, the one thing, too, is, is they're, they're really a physical team. You know, you, you, you know, people will say, well, they're throwing it, they're screens. They're physical. And, uh, you know, we knew we were in a tough game, and, and, I, and I think our guys were sore after the game, and I'm sure they were too. In that game, you didn't have Derek Crane at full strength. He was limited to nine carries, and those came late. I think his number one goal there was don't lose the football in that scenario. And I thought Jacob really stepped up, and you kind of bragged about him after the game. Much, uh, much rewarded, much uh, deserved, I would say. Yeah, he, you know, he played well, and uh, – you know, the, he, he threw some great balls. I mean, the, the post to to, uh, to uh, C.J. Board was huge. Put it right on the numbers. And then Xavier Borshotti, that throw wasn't a tough throw, but it was it was right there, and Xavier made a nice catch. He threw a corner route to C.J. one time in a big third-down situation. Uh, great throw. A really nice catch by C.J. too. Um, so he, he made some big-time throws. But I think where, where he really helped us in that game was with his feet and, and running the football and getting us some critical first downs and some big chunks of yards uh, with his legs. So proud of him. He, he had a great game. On the road this Saturday at Presbyterian. Uh, we've been there one other time, I believe, in your history. And they're a pretty good football team. I know they lost their first two games on the road at Charlotte, at Miami of Ohio, but claimed a home victory last time out. Yeah, well, that was our first year, and I can remember that game vividly. Um, uh, you know, we, we, we got the win, and, and, and but uh, they played us tough. And, you know, the only thing I can say about Presbyterian is, one, they're in a really good league. You know, so I, don't, I don't think – I think they're getting credit, that league, with Coastal, Liberty, who beat Montana, uh, Charleston Southern. They've gone deep in playoffs, all those teams. Big South. Big South Conference. And I don't think people realize this, but Presbyterian beat Furman and Western Carolina last year. So we know we're playing a really, really good football team, a talented team uh, that's well coached. So, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to have to pr prepare and play really well to win this game. Box go to Presbyterian on Saturday. That's a 7 o'clock kickoff on Saturday night. We'll have highlights of the Mox game with the Blue Hose next time on Inside Chattanooga Football. Inside Chattanooga Football has been brought to you by Allegra, 24-hour relief from indoor and outdoor allergies. By Coca-Cola, Chattanooga Coca-Cola Bottling Company, the world's largest Coca-Cola bottler. By FSG Bank, proud to be the official bank of Chattanooga Mox Athletics.